Man, this console is heavy. I wish there was an easier way for practicing mixing at church when I'm at home. If you want to practice at home for the next time you're mixing at church, Studio One 5 offers a whole lot of features that are really helpful for making it feel like you're on a digital console even when you're at home. Hey, if we haven't met, my name's James, and I'm here to help you make every worship mix an enjoyable one. Go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. One question I get asked a lot is how do you practice at home when you can't make it to church? Virtual sound check is awesome, but sometimes it's hard to get to the church building. Maybe it's not available after your work hours, or just going there is impractical because of distance. The next best thing to taking your console home is to use a digital audio workstation on your computer. And it's a lot easier on your back than carrying the console too. PreSonus' Studio One 5 has a lot of features that can be used in a whole lot of different ways, whether you're a composer, musician, editor, or mixer. But today I'm gonna be looking at it as a substitute for a digital console so that you can really dive in and hear what the different parameters are doing when you're practicing at home. To get started, you'll need Studio One Prime, Artist, or Professional. Studio One Prime is free and comes with a whole lot of features, but the features that you get in jumping up to the artist level makes it worth the money for me. You'll also need a way to listen. Your laptop speakers aren't gonna cut it, so you'll need some headphones plugged into the headphone jack, or maybe you have an audio interface where you can plug in some studio monitors to get a little bit more control and a little less headphone fatigue. But at this point, getting started is more important than getting it perfect. Next, you'll need some tracks. Hopefully you can record your own worship band so that you can deal with that same singer or that same guitar tone that you're dealing with week after week. You'll need a separate hard drive from your system hard drive, and this needs to be either a solid state drive or a hard disk drive that spins at at least 7200 RPM. I know, it kind of stinks that to learn audio, you gotta learn IT, but that's the world that we live in. After creating a new session, go down to the browse panel in the bottom right corner of Studio One. Up at the top of that, you'll see the Files tab, and from there you can navigate to find the tracks that you want to import. If you select all these files, you can drag them all at once into the timeline. This will create a new audio track per file and name it the same as the file name. The only thing is, they'll come in the alphabetical order that you dragged them in. So to avoid having to drag all your tracks all around, you can rename the files before you drag them in. So kick is 01 kick snare is zero to snare, and so forth. That way you've got them in the same order as your console back at church. As any great coach says, we practice the same way that we play, so you'll wanna set it up so all your tracks are in the same order as they show up on the console at church. Being able to find things quickly saves brain power when we're trying to get to something that we wanna tweak with EQ or compression. Now, if you wanna drag them into the timeline window one at a time so that you don't have to rearrange them later or rename them, you can do this, but make sure that you drag them all to the same spot. One easy way to do it is to drag it to the very beginning of the timeline, or you can use the snap to grid feature, which makes the audio files start point like a little magnet to whatever subdivision that you want in your timeline. So once you've imported, arranged, and timelined all your tracks, now you can go to the mixer window. You can go up to view and then mixer. Right beside there, you'll see the keyboard shortcut for it, and you'll wanna learn this one because you'll be bringing it up a whole lot. You can even customize your shortcuts. So if you've worked in a different digital audio workstation, you can make it match what you used before, and then you don't have to spend time learning new muscle memory for those shortcuts. Now by default, your mixer might be set up so that the inserts and the sends show up to the right of each channel strip when you double click it. I don't prefer this because I wanna see everything all at once. So I click the up and down arrow over on the bottom left corner, and this will arrange the inserts and sends up above the fader. If it's hidden initially, you can drag up at the top edge of that window to reveal it. The quickest way for you to get going and mixing, instead of worrying about all this setup stuff and choosing each individual plugin for each channel, is to load their fat channel plugin across all of your channels. So select the first channel, hold down shift, and then select the last channel, and this will select all of them in between. Now, if you go to add an insert on one of them, it will add that same insert on all of them. So add fat channel if you've got Studio One Artist or Professional, or if you're on Studio One Prime, add the channel strip and the compressor plugin right after it. Fat channel is a channel strip that's got the high pass filter, gate, EQ, compression, and a limiter all built into one. You can switch any of these processors in and out of the chain, or even choose whether or not the EQ or compressor comes first. 
It's actually the same processor that's built into all of the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 consoles. So if you're already mixing on a Studio Live Series 3 console, you'll get the exact same parameters, and that is really helpful. Now, one really cool feature is that in addition to the standard EQ and compressor, they have different compressor and EQ modules that are fun to play with and give you a much different sound. They're a lot of fun and can get you some great results, but they don't have quite as much flexibility. And if you're practicing mixing for a different console, although it's cool to listen to the differences, it's really not gonna help you translate those skills to when you go back to church and start mixing again. If you wanna add some effects channels to play around with reverb delay or some other crazy effect, you can add that easily to a group of channels in the same way that we added fat channel to everything. You select the first channel that you wanna add the effect to, hold down shift, and then click on the last one that you want to do. Here, I'm gonna add a drum reverb. Now click on the plus beside where it says sends, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says add effects channel. This will add the send to all the selected channels, create a new effects channel, and then when you rename the effects channel, all the sends going to it are gonna be renamed as well. At the top of this effects channel, you can add a new insert by clicking on the plus and then selecting your reverb type. Now, if you've watched my other videos for setting up reverb on drums or vocals, you'll know that I like to EQ my send before it gets to the reverb. So if you add an EQ plugin to this effects channel, you'll wanna drag it so that it comes before the effects processor. This way it goes through the EQ and then it goes to the reverb. If you wanna get funky and play around with compressed reverb, you'll wanna put that compressor after the reverb plugin. When you're getting all this set up, think about the effects channels that you already have set up at church and how they're arranged. Again, we want all the skills that we work on to translate really well next time we go to mix. If you're not sure which reverb to try, the built-in Room Reverb plugin is really handy, and it's got a lot of the same parameters that you'll find on any console that you're mixing on. The delay modules sound really cool too, and the only limit there is your own creativity. Here's a pro tip. Hold down the Shift key when you're adjusting parameters that seem kind of jumpy. This puts it into fine-tuning mode so that you can get it dialed in just the way you want it. Now, one big advantage of practicing at home is that you can really try to dial in those functions and parameters that you just can't hear in the midst of the heat of battle when you're getting sound check and rehearsal and the worship service going. One of my favorite tools inside Studio One is the compare function. You get to compare two different settings of the same plugin so that you can switch back and forth really easily. Well, it makes it easier to switch it. It still takes time to develop your ear and really hear what the changes are doing. So here's how you do it. You make a setting and then save your session. Now tweak your parameter and then hit compare. It will jump back to the way that it was the last time you hit save. Hit it again and you're back to your new version. So if you're with me so far and this is making sense, type compare down in the comments below. Okay, let's be honest. It took a long time to get all this stuff set up. And when you wanna practice mixing, you just wanna practice. You don't wanna deal with all this setup stuff every time. To save yourself from doing all this work all over again, we're gonna save a template. That will save your effects sends, inserts, and plugin settings, so the next time you wanna load in new tracks, you can do it in a new session, but it's already got all your settings saved. So go up to File and hit Save as Template. Name it whatever you want, and then the next time you go to create a new session, you'll find it under the User tab of the templates. Drag in your new tracks, and you're ready to mix. The thing that sets Studio One 5 apart is the Scenes function. This lets you save all your fader, pan, EQ, and compression settings across your entire mix that you can quickly recall. So if you wanna compare one method of mixing to another method of mixing, you can hear what those differences are with the same tracks and a couple clicks. Down at the bottom left of the mix window, you'll see a little button that will show the different scenes. Open that up and click the plus at the top of the scenes panel. It'll ask you to name your scene and then it saves all the parameters across all your channels. You can make some adjustments and make a new scene and then you can compare what it was like before and what it was like after. If you're trying to learn new techniques and watching a bunch of YouTube videos, kind of like the ones up here, it can be helpful to hear what the difference is on what you normally do and what somebody else suggested that you try. You can see if it works better the way that you've already been doing it or somebody else's approach might be better. You never know till you try and it's never been easier to compare. Now that you're practicing at home, your mixes are gonna start to improve really quickly. If you want your sound check to go smoothly too, I made a free checklist for you. You can download it through the link in the description below. 
Now, as awesome as this software is, there's a few things that I wish it could do a little bit better. The first one relates to stereo tracks or groups of tracks. I wish it was easier to group settings of plugins across several channels. So if I want to change the EQ on my overhead left and my overhead right at the same time, I've got to do it on one and then drag it and copy it over to the other one. That's not a showstopper, but it'd be easier if you create a stereo file and import that before you get that set up. If you've got stereo overheads or keyboards, you should add that to your setup routine. The other thing is I really wish the fat channel had a low pass filter. I realize not everybody wants one, but I want one and it's a really handy mixing tool. You could even make the top band switch from shelving to peak to low pass filter and that would do the trick. Overall, I'm really happy with Studio One as a mixing tool to practice at home. The free version is priced just right to get started and the artist and pro versions are really helpful if you wanna take your parameters to the next level. Needless to say, it has a ton of other features for making and mixing music that I didn't even scratch into. But if you're just using it as a way to practice at home, it definitely ticks all the boxes. Now, if you're using PreSona Studio Live consoles at your church, they do have a House of Worship Facebook group, and I'm in there too. You should go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below. Hey, if you liked this video and wanna see more product reviews, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and tell me down in the comments below. Don't forget to share this with a friend, hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. You can check out some more tutorials over here. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time.